Don't worry, the chair is important for the video. What is up guys? My name is Kai, I'm the Nerd Up Strength, and today we change locations for the video. Well, not actually, still in my office, just instead of being in front of the computer, we're using the statues as a backdrop. Uh, not as a flex, no, 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 just, just to kind of show you the chair that I showed you guys in the intro of the video. But anyway, before I really get started, I just want to say, obviously, I'm not making a recap of Your Strongest Man. Uh, there are several great recap videos out there from actual strongman like Alexei Novikov, the Saltman Brothers, the Lawless Brothers, who you should watch on YouTube and give them a like and a subscribe. They're a great channel and need more subscribers. And of course, everybody's favorite auntie and uncle combo, Laws and Liz. The only thing that I will add is congratulations to Alexei Novikov for being Europe's Strongest Man 2022. It is great and a well-deserved victory. Same to Luke Stoltman for coming in second and Constantine Janashia for coming in third. My predictions were kind of right, just the order was a bit different. Anyway, with Europe's being over, the next major strongman competition is World's Strongest Man, which is taking place in less than 50 days from now. So today I want to talk about the fan experience and help you decide if you should go to Worlds in Sacramento, California from May 23rd to the 29th. So I'm going to give you four pros and four cons of traveling to World's Strongest Man. Now I don't claim to be an expert on these things, but I did travel to Worlds in 2019 down in Bradenton, Florida. And I do have a bit of experience from a fan perspective on what it's like to see the show in person. I also have a video where I talk to people from out of state and even out of the country on my channel about the experience that we all kind of went through in the link in the description below or in the banner box. Uh, I don't know where the banner box is, it's either this side or this side, but check that video out if you'd like to. But before I get into the pros and the cons, I just want to prep this for anybody who may not know. While World Strongest Man is probably the most prestigious title in Strongman, please understand that World Strongest Man is a TV show first and a competition second. Fans have said that, commentators have said that, athletes have said that. Once again, World's Strongest Man is a TV show first and a competition second. So just keep that in mind while making decisions on if you really want to go to Worlds. Of course, every event is what you make it. And while there were a lot of not so fun things that happened at Worlds 2019, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything in the world. I enjoyed my time and I made a lot of friends who I still talk to today and I don't regret going on the trip. But for some people, maybe it wasn't all of that. But I will say to be positive, World seems to actively be making strides to make it a better fan experience overall and I'm willing to give them a second chance this year. If you didn't watch my previous video where I responded to World Strongest Man doing Q&A on Reddit, I will be traveling to Worlds this Memorial Day to view the event. Uh, while I didn't spend $1,500 on the Ultimate VIP, I decided to splurge for VIP for one day and I chose VIP for the finals. So I'll be in general admissions for all the qualifiers in day two of the finals and VIP for day one of the finals. That way I get to experience both and kind of make a blog on how that feels being amongst the normal people and being amongst the VIP. So again, if you see me, say hi. So with all that being said, let's start off positively with a pro. You don't have to buy VIP tickets to go see the event. You don't need to spend $1,500, $250, $350 to see the event. It is a free general admission event. You literally just show up and you get to see some strong men lift some heavy objects. In return, you're kind of basically being used as a TV extra. Uh, I responded to somebody in my YouTube comments who was, he was debating whether he should go to Worlds or not. And I will, and I stick by that statement. You are a glorified unpaid extra. 
uh, in return for going for free, you are expected to cheer, jump, yell, applaud for the athletes and make the area look spacious. But again, you get to see your favorite athletes compete and some people might never get to experience this again. You know, unless you willingly travel to the UK or you can go to the Arnold once a year, when's the other time you get to see your favorite pro athletes compete? A con to the general admission being free is when they responded to me during their Q&A, they said general admissions is standing room only and there is no seating for you guys. So you'll basically be standing around in a bullpen and if you're short, you're unfortunately kind of assed out. So keep that in mind with deciding on whether you want to be general admissions or VIP. Uh, if you still decide to come VIP, just make sure that you come early. Times listed on the website right now are 7 a.m. But, you know, if you've been in Strongman for a while, you know nothing starts on time in Strongman. It'll probably be more like 8, but I will say still show up at 7 a.m. to get a good spot. If you watch either the U.S. or the U.K. broadcast of Worlds 2019, you can see my stupid face throughout the crowd shots of the finals and the qualifiers. I got there at a really early time in the morning and I got pretty good, you know, viewing for most of the events, especially for when Mateus mogged everybody during the press medley in the finals, A1. Perfect. The VIPs, of course, have their own section to themselves. They have skybox seating. So again, if you're debating on which one you're going to get, it depends on if you want to be seated for most of the event or you want to be standing in amongst the, the, the regular people. Touching on the general admission being standing room only, another pro is bring your own chair. As far as I know and looking on the world website, there's no restrictions to what you can and can't bring into the venue. Within reason, of course. Within reason. But there's no restrictions on whether you can bring chairs with you, snacks, water, what have you. Obviously, you just have to follow local laws and ord ordinances, which means, you know, there's probably no open alcohol. But again, there's no restrictions to if you want to bring a seat with you. I brought my own chair with me to Worlds in 2019, and it was a lifesaver. This is the chair that I'll be bringing with me to Worlds. This has a back piece, super foldable, super easy. The chair that I'm sitting in now is only $19 on Amazon. It even has a nice supportive back, which is really nice. And it's foldable, there's a strap on it so I can put it around my shoulders, and it folds up really easy and I can pick it up with me and take it on the go. I will preface this, uh, especially since strong men or bigger people, uh, be mindful of the weight limit on some of these chairs, whether you buy them at Amazon or Walmart or wherever. The chair that I'm currently sitting in has a weight limit of 200 pounds. Uh, just for size preference, I'm 5'6 and I weigh 175 and I feel very comfortable in this chair. But be mindful when you're ordering these, you know, before the event. Again, there was no rule about what you could bring with you. Uh, so definitely bring something with you to be comfortable. There is a lot of downtime. Bring snacks, bring food, save yourself some money. You know, if you don't want to lose your spot, you know, bring stuff to make yourself comfortable. And that leads to my next con, is there is a lot of downtime in between events. Hell, there's a lot of downtime just in between athletes sometimes. So if you're somebody who wants to make this a family event and you want to bring like really small children who might be impatient, please keep that in mind. This is not a fast paced show like say Giants Live, there's only 10 minutes in between each event. Sometimes it's an hour or two, sometimes it's five or six hours in between events. The Worlds 2019, on the first day, there was a lightning storm and the Giants medley got delayed by two hours. Thankfully, nobody got struck by lightning and unfortunately, a lot of fans had dispersed when the rain really came on hard. Um, but yeah, you, you never know what could happen at Worlds because it's an outdoor event. There could be weather delays, heat delays, uh, equipment failures, technical issues with the filming crews. So please keep that in mind. You will be waiting around a lot. Plus, there's not a lot of events that happen each day. Maybe one or two, three if you're lucky on each day of the events. I was kind of waiting to make this video just because I was hoping that they were going to announce the events. Um, 
this week to see how many events we have in the qualifiers and the finals, but they didn't. And watch, I'm gonna upload this video and they're going to post the events. I'm gonna feel stupid, but whatever. But I will just say uh, we have three days of qualifying from May 24th through the 26th. Friday, May 27th is a down day. There will be no events taking place that day. And then the finals will take place on Saturday and Sunday, the 28th and the 29th. Typically on like the days of the qualifier, it'll be like two events each. Uh, depending on how many events they decide to do, it could be two or three events each day. And on day three, the qualifiers, if they're still doing the stone off, which I really hope they're not doing the stone off, day three of the qualifiers is just the stone off. You, you're going to watch like five groups of guys just do Atlas stones on day three of the qualifiers and that's it. <laughs> so please keep that in mind, especially if you're not a fan of the last man standing Atlas stones or you just don't like Atlas stones, you're just watching guys do that event. That's basically what the last day of the qualifiers will be. So keep that in mind if you are traveling or if you're trying to pick a day if you want to buy VIP or something. Events might be spread out more evenly depending on how many events are in the finals. If it's a six event final, it'll probably be three and three on each day. Uh, like I said, we don't have any events just yet, so we'll play that by ear. For our next pro, I will say, even though there's a lot of downtime, make friends. I made a lot of friends when I went to Worlds of 2019. People I still talk to today. I met people from Poland, Greece, Scotland, and it was it was really cool to see people's experiences and and honestly by the last day of the finals we we all bonded together through our hatred of how the show was being run, which was kind of messed up, but it was kind of funny. Definitely make friends at the event, especially if you're going to be general admissions and you got a really good spot that you want to save. You need to relieve yourself, go to the bathroom, get food, what have you. You know, be be courteous to one another. Like, if you're going to go get food, you know, to the guy saving your spot, like, hey, do you want something to drink? I can go get you something, some food. You need something, take breaks, what have you. Like, it, it was it was really fun just, just meeting people and getting uh, to talk to people who, who share the same interests as you because I don't have any friends, you know, locally who compete or care about this sport. They're just nice to me and humor me and let me talk about this to them, but they don't actually care. So hang out, meet some people, be pretty chill. I ended up hanging out with Romark's dad for like most of Worlds 2019. And I didn't even realize it was Romark's dad until the last day. How you doing, Bill? <laughs> Hope to see you again this year. But yeah, just be kind to one to another. Be chill, be respectful, have fun. My next con, however, is regarding general admissions. Uh, going back to the Q&A that they did, the, what really swayed me on buying a VIP ticket for at least one day was were general admissions fans allowed to meet the athletes? And they said that there was no guarantee. Now that's not a hard 100% no, you can't meet the, the athletes, but they're saying that there's no guarantee to, to meet the athletes if you are just general admission. Now I'm sure the athletes will be walking around the fan zone. You might even see them in town when they're getting food or whatever. Uh, 2019, I met a lot of strongmen just chilling out on the beach on the downtime or in between events. Maddox, remember Maddox was just chilling with his family. Ivar, Schmock, Stellas. I, I saw him at like fucking Texas Roadhouse, <laughs> you know? Uh, JF Caron. You know, you, you meet these people in the most random places and you just say hi, get a quick picture, what have you. Uh, the only thing is, of course, like fans, please be respectful to the athletes. If they seem like they're rushing or, you know, they're in between events or they're getting ready for an event, please don't bother them or yell at them. At the end of the day, they are here to do a job. So just please be respectful to them. I'm sure a lot of them will be super cool and they won't just, you know, swatch you away if you want a quick picture or whatnot. But it seems like there'll be a more control setting for VIPs to meet athletes versus general admissions fans. Probably like how Giants Live does their VIP experiences where they have meet and greets and Q and A's with the athletes before and after their shows. Again, don't really have a lot of information. I'm just going off of a comment that they uh, responded to on Reddit. Uh, hopefully they'll give us more information before Worlds happens. But keep that in mind so you know you don't set yourself up for disappointment if you really want to meet a specific athlete. Uh, but that's also not me saying spend, you know, a bunch of money just, just to get a picture with Brian Shaw, you know. So, you know, 
hopefully general admissions fans get lucky and still be able to meet their fan uh to meet their athletes and a lot of the athletes are super chill super nice you know i got a picture of luke stolman while he was drinking a beer on the beach you know these guys are teddy bears you know if you come to them respectfully i'm sure they'll take a quick selfie with you or something uh and my last pro is the fan zone Again, World seems to actively be making strides to make this a better fan event than years past. So I'm super excited to see what the fan zone experience is going to be like. Or be disappointed and hurt and never come back to Worlds again. We'll see. Fingers crossed it's the former, not the latter. But they mentioned food trucks, merchandise, which is a real good one, a big one for me. Uh, fan zone experience, I'm sure there'll be activities, fun and games, and stuff to do for the whole family while you're waiting in between events or during the off day of World's Strongest Man. So, when there's more information on that, I'll probably make another video about it, but, you know, fingers crossed that there'll be a lot of fun things to do during the fan fest portion of the event. Uh, if you look at the area map, it looks like the fan fest portion is a very large part of the venue. So I hope that there's a lot of vendors and a lot of fun activities to do. Also, we're in downtown Sacramento, so there's a lot of just activities to do outside of World's Strongest Man, like the museums. There's, there's an arcade bar kind of like a couple blocks away from the venue. Definitely explore the city and have some fun. And again, if you see me, say hi. And finally, the last con is no filming. So, 2019, I got a lot of videos of the events from the finals and the qualifiers. I was even live streaming on Instagram and it was great. You know, felt like I was bringing the community together. But this year, as much as I would like to film stuff, there is no promises that I will be able to film stuff because I'm not trying to get kicked out of the venue because it's a very expensive trip. So, last year, Worlds did allow a select few fans to come to the venue and watch the event. Uh, however, there was not a lot of fan video posted online. So I imagine it's going to be the same this year, where they're going to be very controlled about what gets out there on social media. So again, no promises that I'll be able to live stream or post anything to YouTube besides a couple of pictures with athletes and maybe a vlog or two about, you know, the fan experience. If you're going to Worlds and you think you can try and be sneaky and maybe get some stuff on your camera, maybe, but if you have a point and shoot camera like I do, you're probably going to have a lot more unwanted attention on yourself. So please be mindful. And again, don't get yourself kicked out of the venue. Uh, however, that says nothing from posting to Reddit and the Strongman Archive. How you doing, Strongman Archive? How you doing, Strongman Reddit? I will be updating you guys at least. Um, but yeah, just be mindful with that. Uh, if they ask you to, if you get caught and they ask you to stop, just just stop. They do have the right to kick you out. There usually is a lot of signage around worlds about you being recorded and what you can and can't record. So again, if security comes up to you and rushes you, that's your ass. That's not on me. And also, don't bring drones. That that like happened like twice at Worlds 2019. Like there were two unsolicited drones that were flying over the event and they had to stop, you know, recording and stop the events until like those drones got out of the area. So that was like kind of annoying and again made the wait time, another one of my cons, um, kind of annoying. So unless you work for the filming crew, don't, don't be that guy. So there you have it guys, those are my eight pros and cons of going to World's Strongest Man 2022. The last thing I will say is be cool, be chill, be respectful to both your fellow fans and the athletes. And the only other thing that is of note on their website right now is regarding their COVID policy. They're not checking vaccinations. They're not requiring masks at the moment. It does say uh, in compliance with the state health and safety guidelines, face coverings will be strongly encouraged in indoor areas, but not in outdoor areas. Uh, however, it does say it is subject to change. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, don't hassle anybody about any COVID shit. Just be kind to each other. Don't hassle anybody. We're all here to watch some straw man and have a good time. Be respectful and cool to one another. Anyway, guys, that is my pros and cons of going to World Strongest Man 2022. 
Once again, my name is Kai. I am the Nerd of Strength. If you like what I do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And also, remember, I will be in Sacramento from May 23rd to the 29th. So if you see me, say hi. Say happy birthday. Give me a fist bump. Let's chat. Let's connect. Let's all have fun. I, of course, will be doing more videos leading up to World's Strongest Man. And if there's any information on the two Arnold Pro qualifiers, I'll talk about that. I'll, of course, have prediction videos and a lot more leading up to World's Strongest Man. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.